Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna check out the channel Prevail Islam with their video Who is Allah? Eye-opening. I believe that we humans are given the chance through scripture and prayer to get closer to God. I think that this is how we get to know God ultimately. Nevertheless, I'm still curious to find out what this video has to say about God, what it has to say about Allah. With no further ado, let's have a look. Who is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the universe, yep. the king of everyone, and the lord of everything. He is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. He manages the affairs of all kingdoms. He commands and forbids, creates and provides, gives life and death, raises and lowers people, exactly. alternates night and day and alternates victory and defeat amongst nations so that one nation rises and another falls. This is exactly right. I just had a talk with my Arabic teacher last week about this fascinating subject. If we look at nations, we look, for example, at the Germans, at the Swedes, the Vikings, and how they were emperors, conquerors of their time. And out of a sudden, it's all flipped on its head. Those nations have become weak. They allow for all kinds of degeneracy. They allow the family structure to fall apart. They are the exact opposite of what they used to be. Or if we look at the Arabs, just desert dwelling people, and now they are building skyscraper after skyscraper, oil billionaires. So what is this due to? If you look into national socialism or eugenics, those people will tell you that is due to race. It is us white people. We are the smartest and we build nations, etc, etc, you name it. But if you look into it, that cannot be the truth. It seems like every nation gets its shot. Sometimes they are kings and rulers, and then a few years later they're absolutely nobody so ultimately this displays beautifully that it's all in god's hands only allah's commands and decree are carried out throughout the heavens and the earth deep in the oceans and in the skies and yes. throughout the entire universe his knowledge encompasses all matters accounting for each and every being and enveloping them with his mercy and wisdom he hears all voices in their different languages and with their varied requests and pleas. One voice does not distract him from hearing another, nor do their innumerable pleas confuse him. The pleading of the needy beggars knocking it uh, that's actually hilarious because if you look into movies of jim carrey for example when he becomes god it is a very anthropomorphic picture of god it is very human of course because you see that god gets a lot of emails a lot of requests of prayers and he cannot catch up with them all because it's all so much of course god is not a human god is all hearing all seeing his comprehension his consciousness cannot be compared to any Anything we find here in this human realm. His door does not aggravate him, nor do their questions annoy him. He sees all things, the visible and invisible. He sees the black ant crawling across a solid black rock in a pitch dark night. No matters are hidden from him, nor are secrets withheld from him. Amen. He has knowledge of all that has occurred and all which has yet to occur. Exactly Everyone right. in the heavens. And this displays beautifully that God is transcendent. He is the absolute opposite of creation. Within creation, you have the creation of time and space. But God transcends time and space. And this is how he has the knowledge of what has been and what will be. Because within God, there is no time. Time is an illusion for us mere mortals. And the earth beseech him for their needs. Every day, he attends to his creation. He forgives sins, eases difficulties, and relieves distress. He mends the broken, enriches the poor, teaches the ignorant, guides the astray, 
directs the confused and helps the desperate. Only he frees the captive, yes. feeds the hungry, clothes the naked, and cures the sick. It's all him. He accepts the repentance of the one who repents and rewards the one who does good. He aids the oppressed and humbles the tyrant. Exactly. He conceals faults. This is exactly what we as people often fail to understand. We are trapped in this state of separation. We look around and we see the other. We see ourselves as the single entity. But those are the eyes of the ego, of course. Those are the eyes of us humans. Because we are not God, we see everything in separation. However, everything is dependent upon God. We think that somebody gave food to the beggar. A richer person gave charity to a poorer one. But ultimately you have to understand that everything you witness is created by God and therefore everything happens due to God. He is clothing the poor, not you. And calms fears. He does not sleep, nor sleep benefit him. Exactly right. Very beautiful yet again. This is what I started struggling with when I began to reread the Bible, when I reread Genesis. Of course, you can find that in the Torah as well. This is the Old Testament after all. You see that God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. This is an absolute human invention for me. God needs no rest. Deeds of the night ascend to him before those of the day and the deeds of the day before those of the night. Light is his veil. If he were to lift his veil in this world, the splendor of his face would burn all of his creation. What he possesses is not diminished by what he gives, for his right hand always remains full. On the day of judgment, the whole earth will be enclosed in a single grip of his hand, and all the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand then he will shake them and say, I am the king. I am the king. It is I who created the world out of nothingness, and I who will return it to how it was. No sin is too great for him to forgive. No request too great for him to fulfill. We're all in his heavens and on his earth. From the beginning to the end of his creation, mankind and jinn alike were to be as pious as the most pious amongst them. This would not increase his sovereignty no. in the slightest. It doesn't do anything. It's very interesting, actually, if you look at this phenomena of repentance, of praying, of being pious. It is not for God. It is for us. It's very, very simple. Ultimately, there is a right and a wrong. If you don't believe this, you're a moral relativist. And that is fine, but we cannot have any discussion based upon moral relativism. Because then I do not have to listen to your argument because it's invalid. There is no foundation for that argument to begin with. However, if we establish that there is a right and a wrong, that there is a good and an evil, then we come to the clear realization that there is a right way of conduct for the human being. Just as if you look at dogs, you understand that there is a right way of behavior for dogs and then you understand there are dogs that are barking and pulling the leash. This is wrong behavior for that dog and the same applies for the human being. Yet again, there is a right and wrong for us as well. Pursuing a career as a woman and being frustrated in your 40s because you do not have children is not the right way of course god created us with intent and therefore we are the happiest if we follow the commandments of god they are simple physical commandments for example if you jump off a building you're gonna damage yourself or worst case scenario you're gonna die so therefore you do understand there are certain laws of gravity and you do not wish to transgress those laws but guess what there are laws permeating throughout creation moral laws Laws, spiritual laws, physical laws, psychological laws, it all comes from God. And if we follow those laws, it is good for us. It doesn't change anything in God. Because God is perfect, there is no change in Him. And if they all, from the beginning to the end of His creation, mankind and jinn alike, were to be as sinful as the most sinful amongst them, 
this would not decrease his sovereignty yes. in the slightest. I mean, and this is exactly why I started criticizing the Trinity and with it the crucifixion. Because if we believe that God had to become a human in order to forgive our sins, this would imply that he wasn't perfect to begin with. Why would God need a human experience in order to do anything? Of course, he does not. He is the origin of everything. He is perfect to begin with. He has no beginning, no end. There is no time frame within him him within his eternity so why would he need to incarnate to do anything if all those in his heavens and on his earth human beings in jinn living and dead were to assemble in one place and ask him and he gave each one of them what they asked for this would not decrease what he has by even an atom's weight exactly right very powerful yet again we are speaking about god that is perfect that is full within himself there is no access to him that he could give away or anything that he could gain through his creation he is the first before whom there is nothing Correct. the last after whom there is nothing yes he is the most high and there is nothing above him amen the most near and there is nothing closer than him he is the most blessed and exalted. He is the most worthy of being worshipped and remembered. He is the most deserving to be thanked and praised. He's he is the, the most one. compassionate of kings, the most generous of those who are asked, the most forgiving of those who have power, and the most just of those who take revenge. With his knowledge comes wisdom, with his might, his forgiveness, and with his withholding, his wisdom. None obeys him except by his permission. None sins except by his knowledge. When he is obeyed, he is appreciative. When disobeyed, he overlooks and forgives. His anger is always just. Every punishment from him is just, and every blessing from him is a favor. He is the closest witness and the nearest protector. The he records the deeds and sets down the appointed times for all things. When he intends something to be... Of course, because even if you look into the materialistic world, you of cause and effect. You had the Big Bang, I personally do not believe in it, and then from there on, on this was the cause, and then you have an effect, and another cause, and another effect, and another cause, and another effect. That is a causal chain. But if you can look into that and accept that as a reality, you would of course understand that nothing can happen on anybody's watch but that of God, of course, because he put those domino pieces into place. He, he only says it to be and it is. Right. Kun fire kun. He's the king who has no partner, the unique who has no rival, the perfect master who has no companion or child. He's the independent who has no helper. Everything will perish except his face. Every kingdom falls except his kingdom. Every grace except his has its limits. There is none like him. Amen. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely amazing video yet again. It reminded me of me reading the Quran because this is the essence that I experienced throughout reading the Quran. The shifting of my focus back onto what is important. God. Because if you look into other religions, there are always partners and certain saints, certain practices, people attached to the worship of God. And like that, it can scatter your mind. Nowadays, we already started appreciating the benefits of minimalism. Hey, get rid of your old belongings and make everything minimalistic. Look at your flat. Feng Shui. Make it as minimalistic as possible. It will clear up your mind. Clear up your schedule and this will clear clear up your mind. But how about the most important in our life? How about the priorities in our life? Shouldn't we get those straight? If we think about our priorities, the highest should be, of course, God. But once we start attaching all kinds of things to God, it becomes very foggy, of course, and like that we lose track. This is why I love this monotheism, this description of one all-powerful God that controls absolutely everything and only throughout his grace we can achieve anything 
in this world. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, guys, thank you so much for your ongoing support. The links are in the description box below. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.